turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 5. Gospel according to Matthew chapter 5, we are looking at um, the, our Lord's Sermon on the Mount um, uh, portion of the scripture, starting from chapter 5, verse 1 onwards. Where this um, morning we will read from uh, verse 17 about um, the, the righteousness of God's kingdom. We were looking at um, the Beatitudes, and now we will read from verse 17 to verse um, 20. It's a short portion. We will read it from verse 17 to verse 20. Alternatively, that's um, I'm going to read verse 17. The Lord here is saying, "Think not that I am come." To destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. Let's read 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Verse 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. First, for I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. Dear loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for giving us this beautiful day on the Lord's day to be in your courts with praise and thanksgiving. Lord, as your children, Lord, as we look to you for um, your voice, Lord, I pray that give me, Lord, the utterance and um, the, the voice that's needed and speak through me, Lord, what you have for your children. I commit this time to you. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. The portion of the sermon um, here, of the Sermon on the Mount, as the Lord is preaching, so uh, beautifully about um, his kingdom and the citizens of his kingdom. The, the qualities of the citizens of this kingdom were described as beatitudes. And um, what is the marks of those that are in the kingdom of God? And um, what is their um, testimony? And um, what it means to be part of his kingdom, the, their uh, true inner life or their true inner character is mentioned by the Beatitudes and also saying that we, those that are part of his kingdom are those like that of, those that shine like the lights, like those that are like salt that brings um, savor to, to the food. Without salt, there is no taste. And as light that shines, uh, we also should also be having similar marks. The inner life, the inner character of a believer should be very evident. And the, not only the Lord speaking about the qualities of um, the children of God, the Lord also says, well, what are the qualities or the, what are the marks of the kingdom of God, the righteousness of God's kingdom is mentioned here in a way that he starts off talking about the law and the prof and the prophets in verse 17, saying that think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill the law and the prophets. The Lord um, begins correcting with um, any false impressions some uh, might have about his ministry, especially as he was ministering. They had this false impression that um, the Lord is trying to put away what was already given to them, the instructions by by Moses and by by the prophets about uh, about um, the scripture and what uh, the instructions that are there in the scripture which uh, in this today's time that we can call it as the old testament 
So, he wants to address this false notion, notion or idea, the impression about his ministry in relationship to the Old Testament uh, law and the prophets. Jesus Christ um, is saying that I have not come to destroy the law and the prophets, but to fulfill the Old Testament scripture. And also he, in this portion, he says that um, in the kingdom of heaven or in, in his kingdom, the quality of righteousness also is, uh, is mentioned here. He's saying that except your, verse 20 says, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees you shall in no case enter into his kingdom, kingdom of heaven. The, the, the quality of righteous standards are given here that and also what his what his ministry is when people were accusing saying that this preacher is coming and uh, is probably trying to disregard everything that was already given to to them by the law and the prophets this charge was towards um, not only towards upon jesus but the charge that he is dis disregarding and destroying what was already given to to them to to the jews and uh, by the law of moses and also by the prophets in the old testament but this charge was we can see this charge was already was charged also to the lord's followers the jews charged stephen in acts chapter 6 verse 11 says when before they were stoning him in Acts 6 verse 10 onwards, I'm going to read it, it, it said that they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Then they suborned men, they suborned men, which said, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. Again, we see this portion of the scripture where the Lord's followers, those believed in uh, Jesus and who followed zealously. In this case, Stephen was accused, was charged of the same charge, saying that they have, he has disregarded and he was speaking blasphemous words against the, the law that's already given to them by Moses and, and going against the instructions of God. The same thing in Acts chapter 21 verse 28, Paul also was charged this, uh, the same accusation by the Jews. In Acts 21, 28, the Jews, when Paul came to Jerusalem, the Jews cried out, saying, crying out, saying, well, men of Israel, help, this is the man that teacheth all men everywhere against the people and the law. And uh, this place and further brought Greeks also into the temple and had polluted this holy place. You see the same charge against Paul, accusing Paul that he is going against what is given to us by Moses and what is given to us by the prophets. He is going against the, the instructions and the law of God. Paul was also charged. Stephen also was charged, the same thing. And uh, the Jews had this false impression that Jesus was trying to completely put down, undermine the law and the prophets <clears throat> and he is starting something new. So Jesus is clarifying here about the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, stating that he has not come to destroy what is already given to them, to destroy the law or the prophets, but Jesus Christ has come to fulfill the law and not to undermine the existing teachings of the scriptures, the law and the prophets. So he was addressing the issue. The real issue is that they are not trying to accuse Jesus saying that you are uh, not trying to keep practice the law, but they are actually trying to uh, say accuse Jesus saying that you wanted to completely abolish the law that is already given to us. Jesus here is saying that, verse 6, 17, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets, I am not come to destroy but to 
fulfill. So we might have this question, what is, what does it mean to say the law and the prophets or the prophets and the prophets. He also ends this similar topic in um, Matthew chapter 7 verse 12 giving um, instruction. Probably we can say this is subtopic closing with, with this closing instruction saying that therefore all things verse 12 says therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you do ye even so to them for this is the law and the prophets. Again he is probably you can say that in the sermon on, in the, on the mount this topic of the law and the prophets can be uh, subdivided as a small as a small subdivision or a paragraph that's ending in verse 12 7 verse 12 he's giving the golden rule of the summary of the law and the prophets is whatsoever you would expect men to do unto you if you are expecting something uh, that people should do unto you the golden rule of is that you do the same thing back unto them what you are expecting them to do you do the same thing and this is the the sum this is a summary of the law and the prophets is the lord is uh, summarizing here probably you can have this um, as one section and jesus is saying about um, this false impression that uh, people are charging against him. The law and the prophets is not just um, as we might imagine as just the ten commandments when we think about law it is not just the ten commandments or um, the the law that is given to the people during the time of Moses about the ceremonial laws or uh, the laws that were given the about the civil laws. Ceremonial laws are those that are special ordinances that are given to go after um, all the sacrifices and the signs that would remind them of the promises of God. God has commanded through Moses to follow all the different sacrifices and di different festivals and uh, various uh, offerings like the burnt offering, peace offering, meal offering, and the trespass sin offering, all those offerings. God has instructed through Moses as a reminder, as a sign, also to keep the Sabbath. These are laws for as um, as part of a old covenant. Just the way how you imagine that um, if you are engaged and uh, there is this marriage, right? After engagement, there's marriage, and if there's a big gap between that. And in the engagement also, as you get engaged, there is certain signs that you would do. And there are certain promises that, that would make. the Imagine it is like that. And then uh, during the time of the marriage, there are certain things that you do as part of um, a sign to say that you are in a holy covenant relationship, right? The signs are something to, to remind yourselves that you are related or you are you are part of this covenantal relationship with God. So those are something that um, are given as part of the sacrifices as a reminder, as a shadow of good things to come. The law in uh, Hebrews chapter 10 was one says that the, the law is given to God's people which is just a sign, a sign uh, to remind themselves um, to follow that God is the one who is going to, in the end, God is going to fulfill the promises of God. In the Old Testament, it's also very clearly mentioned uh, about this, that uh, people of God fail to realize that in um, Exodus chapter um, 31 verse 13, the Lord speak, verse 12 says, the Lord speak unto Moses saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily, my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign. If you misunderstand that there is something that by the works of the law that we can receive righteousness as a people of God, um, the Israelites try to do is they were trying to gain righteousness by the very signs, as if the 
not by uh, by the relationship and the commitment that god demands from them here again it says for it is signed between you and me throughout your generation that you may know that i am the lord that death sanctify you it is god who would do the work of sanctification it is a sign between me and the children of israel to there are certain things that god has instructed god's people to do as a sign to to be part of this covenantal beautiful covenantal relationship and it is only by faith even in the old testament that those that were of faith trusting in god and his promises were truly saved as the bible tells us in hebrews chapter 11 so the lord is saying um here about um he has come to fulfill the law and what is the law and the prophets refer to it's the the written word of god which was avail- available to them and the instructions that were passed on by moses and the prophets that are written in the scripture the commandments and instructions of god which includes um, the moral requirements of this of what god demands of his people which we can call it as scriptures at that time it's called as scriptures now we can call the law and the prophets together is not just talking about the 10 commandments but talking about at this time as the old testament that what jesus said in matthew chapter 7 verse 12 says that this is the golden rule i mean we are saying golden rule because what whatever you expect of others do the same thing and that is the summary of the law and the prophets so that's what um, the law and the prophets mean jesus also mentions about uh, what the law and the prophets in um, matthew chapter 22 verse um, 36 to 40 will turn Let's turn to Matthew twenty two thirty six to forty when Jesus addresses about what is the greatest commandment. Most of you have been caroling, so you must all be uh, very tired. Many of you and um, yesterday we had a very wonderful time. Praise God! But also. Uh, i can understand that you must be tired so i'm asking you to turn the bible to certain pages so you can be active actively listening 22 and also you can correct me if i'm not referring the right verse <laughs> 36 says master which is the greatest great commandment in the law jesus said said unto him thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thine heart with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind this is the first and the greatest commandment and the second is like unto it thou shall love thy neighbor as thyself on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets again jesus is saying that the law and the prophets summary is to love god with all of your heart soul mind and everything with if with all that belongs that god has given you with all of your energy everything from you know in a being you love him and also love your neighbors with with the same heart and that is the whole summary but if you try to ignore and just follow the rules that's not going to uh, that's not going to actually make god happy with you Jesus is saying is imagine if you just have um, in a family uh, if um, uh, take the case of a wife and husband because we are bringing up the marital relationship if the husband um, expects certain things the wife to do and the wife also expects certain things the husband to do let's imagine the case of a wife um, uh, would have like every week bring me flowers and um, that's one of the instructions probably they had in the marriage covenant and um, the husband every week he he'll get flowers but um, he didn't care like anything extra or he didn't care how 
uh, how expensive or he might get the go to the cheapest place and get uh, just the cheapest bouquet <laughs> come back and he is doing his duty and he's just following the rules that cannot win the heart of the wife right so imagine the same way to the husband if the husband expects something and but the wife just be, you have to wash your wash do something and then she does just the same or prepare food and then she just keeps uh, food every day but the same food or something like without giving the heart but just the rules are followed imagine like children also if you tell the children um let's say in the case like every day you have to just take the trash out but uh, if i tell like take the black trash out and there's and some trash next to it but he he just takes the trash he doesn't see what's next to it there's some more trash there they don't care but just take the trash and throws it and then you you see there's some more trash there or there's something that has to be cleaned but if you don't if, when the parents look look at it they're following the rules but they don't have the heart they don't have the love that's missing so uh, we have to understand the heart of god what god is desiring of us is is to love god that is summary of the old testament scriptures jesus also saying that to love god and love one another and that is extended and jesus is addressing this um, accusation discharged against him saying that he is just starting something uh, like a new religion uh, or a new faith and completely undermining what's already given to us the lord is saying that um, i have come not to destroy the law but to fulfill the law of god and the jesus christ has come into this world to fulfill the law of god perfectly he is the perfect man because of our weakness jesus christ is the only perfect human being who had lived perfectly in this world that he is able to redeem them that who are under the curse of the law or who are under this weakness of the flesh jesus christ has come as a perfect man and he took all of our sins on the cross and our sins were la- laid on him and he was crucified and he died and he was buried and he was justified by god as he has risen from the grave god has approved his work on the cross of calvary being a perfect man that he was the only man that the bible tells us that he was pure purify ourselves as he is pure the bible tells us that he is without sin the bible tells us that he did no sin neither was any guile found in his mouth first peter chapter 2 verse 22 and second corinthians chapter 5 verse um, 21 says that um, there he did no there is no let's read that second corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 for he had made him to be a sin for us who knew no sin so he knew no sin he was pure when he was tempted when he was tested he was without sin when he was tried and tested yet he was found to be without any sin hebrews chapter 4 verse um, Fifteen says, "But we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we are, and yet we he was without sin." The Lord Jesus Christ is able, and He is the only one who was able to meet the demands of the law because of our inability, being born. with the nature of sin that's inherited from adam that we have this sinful nature and not only that that we we have sinned against god god redeemed us 
through Jesus Christ. In um, Romans chapter 8, verse 2 to 4, it says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. There is this law of sin and death that is the law that is given to to us in the Old Testament, that's a, that's the moral law of God. The perfect moral standards of God has been written um, and given to us. And we can see the perfect standards of God in the Ten Commandments and also everything that is given to us about the law of God. We can still be under the law of, of sin and death which cannot help us, we are weak by ourselves. Romans says, for the law could not do, be, because it was weak through the flesh, verse 3, because it's the law of sin and death is the law where like if you sin, the results of sin is death. The Bible tells us that if you sin, you shall die. And you can be under the law of sin and death where we try to do, try to overcome sin by the works of the flesh. And here God is saying that the law or could not do in a way that the law was not effective to make us perfect or blameless because the law was holy and the law has very high demands. The standards of law, of God's law, the moral standards are so perfect, so high that we are not able through the law to overcome the demands of the law because the flesh was weak, because we have this sinful nature. But there is another law that works in us. It's called the law of Christ. The law of um, the, the law of the spirit of life in verse 2, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has hath made me free from the law of sin and death. The Lord Jesus Christ has come into this world to fulfill the demands of the law that is written in the Old Testament to live a perfect and a holy life loving God with all of our heart, soul and mind and, um, and loving others. Jesus was able to do everything being a man who did no sin and he walked, when he walked in this world, in, on this earth, that he lived a perfect life, that through the spirit of God that dwells in us, we can come out of this burden uh, of the law that demands death unto a different plane or a different realm in the spirit of Jesus Christ. That's what it's saying, for the law of the spirit of life in in Christ Jesus, if we believe in Jesus Christ, in trust in Jesus Christ, who he is as a person and what he has done for us, the gift of eternal life is given to us freely by the grace of God. We come out of, we come from the under the law that we come out uh, into the grace of God, uh, under the grace of God. So let's re read that in Romans chapter 6 verse 14. You might. Uh, I try to understand what I am trying to say here is Romans 6 verse 14 says for sin shall not have dominion over you for you are not under the law but under the grace of God as long as you have the spirit of God you are called as the children of God as you are called if you have the spirit of God you will be led by the spirit of God and you are called the sons and children of God Romans 8 verse 14 as many as they that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. If you have the Spirit of God, which is given to us as a promise, the Holy Spirit is given to God's children as a promise. If you have this Spirit of God, which the Bible tells us that God, the Holy Spirit is given to us for His children as a gift, and it is freely given, and uh, grace is something that is free, that when we ask God, to give us the Spirit of God, He grants to us as a gift to us. We become the children of God when we trust in Jesus Christ and His work. When we trust that Jesus Christ is God 
and what he has done for for you to redeem us to redeem you from your sins when when you trust him that he will be your redeemer the law of god is fulfilled fulfilled in jesus christ and a new era of fulfillment has has come into being through jesus christ jesus christ has started this new era of of time oh, i'm saying era and time are the same new i would probably can call new era of fulfillment that is mentioned in the matthew chapter 11 verse 13 says all the law and the prophets prophesied until john and after john a new there is a new dawn and a new beginning that is available to those that live by faith the old testament scriptures we can call it as uh, the torah and um, the prophets is just like something provisional as a as a school teacher bible tells us in galatians as a teacher pointing to the reality that's available in jesus christ as the true fulfillment and the true um the it's something that uh, we we can uh, through jesus christ we can be uh, we we can truly see everything fulfilled in, and uh, in jesus christ the law is just trying to open up our our heart condition and feel unrest uh, feel very restless it will open up and make us realize our inability that we cannot do anything uh, because we are weak our flesh is weak that we need somebody uh, as our help the law will help us realize our hopeless and helpless condition so that jesus christ is when jesus christ is displayed to us and when jesus christ is put before us that we will run to him for for help and for refuge if we truly seek sincerity and if we truly speak truth in our hearts then we will be satisfied in jesus christ as our ultimate victory jesus christ has fulfilled the law 100% and uh, the purposes of the law also he had fulfilled fulfilled he has finished the work which the father had given to him to to its full extent john chapter 17 was 14 let's turn to john chapter 17 sorry not 14 4 for i have glorified thee on the earth i have finished the work which thou has given me the purpose of the law is been completed the law by itself cannot profit by itself the law only displays the the glorious perfect standards of of god but jesus christ being the perfect god man he has finished the work which the father had given to him that everything while he was in this world that he lived he always had this mind to complete the work of god the father and he, there are so many times he mentions as moses had commanded let all unrighteousness shall be fulfilled he many times he said it is written it is said many times old testament references are clearly mentioned in the new testament by uh, the apostles and those that that have written god um, that was written it says clearly that to to fulfill what was given in the old testament not to undermine the old testament and come up with something new testament sometimes there are these false preachers who, who say that uh, the law is not re- required at this time but we are under a new covenant relationship we are under grace so there is no need for us to follow the demands of the law but jesus is saying that uh, verily verily i say unto you was 
till heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled so here jesus is saying talking about um, the permanence of the law that the law is equally permanent or as the heavens and as the earth are so is it that it is established and it it will it will remain forever and it is equally important it will never lose its significance not only that that the law to its finest details are shall be as permanent as that of the heavens and the earth there also he was so he, he was so emphasizing about uh, the word of god that is in the old testament the instructions of god's word except um, the shadow of things the, the ceremonial laws and the civil laws that belong to the, to the nation of israel which are just a shadow the moral standards and the instructions of god the moral instructions of god shall stand forever even to the kingdom that is to come even in the new kingdom that he will establish god's moral standards shall not change and uh, it will be so permanent and he is saying he is saying that not even one jot or one jot it means or one it refers to the most minute letter and marks of the hebrew alphabet and um, a jot is the smallest letter of the hebrew alphabet it functions as a y in english it looks similar to the apostrophe like an apostrophe or a comma a tittle is a small projection of the edge of the certain hebrew letters it's just an expression to distinguish from one word to another with a small um, um marks of expressions or apostrophes a small projection of the word of the letter which implies uh, uh, some weight a little bit more weight to the word hebrew is a very rich language even um, greek is but when you compare it to hebrew 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 is much more richer scholars say than the greek language greek is way richer compared to the rest of the languages it some of the things one word we have to we have to describe in a sentence what is expressed in greek because all all these finite ways uh, great ways of expressing um the situation so what all the laws so here jesus is saying that um, all the laws point to the will of god and uh, the the reality of signs and shadows are complete in jesus christ he is being jesus christ being the fulfillment of all the signs and uh, the ceremonial uh, things that uh, the old testament people have done Matthew surely was in mindful of that when he he wrote this portion about Jesus writing this he was not talking about all all the law that um, is necessary we can see um, in the new testament in hebrews that the law or those that are um, given to the people of israel about uh, keeping of the sacrifices and, and all the ceremonial laws and the signs that follow are just the shadow of that is pointing to Jesus Christ and the work of Jesus Christ which Jesus Christ has already done has and he has given us this entrance into a new relationship in his new covenant having been seen the the house of god which is in Jesus Christ it's like you have to come to a place let's say there is this um i would say house warming ceremony and then um, in order to come to the house that you are given some signs to point to and then once you enter into the house you don't need to cling on to the again to the instructions and the directions where you ought to be coming to, to. now you are already in the house of god through jesus christ this reality is available this new covenantal relationship is available as the bible tells us that uh, the law by itself cannot make anything perfect though the law is holy and perfect 
the bible tells us the law of god is perfect converting the soul let's turn to let's the testimony of the lord is sure making wise the simple let's read that psalm chapter 19 Verse seven: The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. So here we see the Lord. The law is perfect, but God has given us a way to escape the demands of the law through Jesus Christ. As long as we are living. in the spirit of christ as long as we are living under the law of christ the law of christ is a law of love the law of the spirit and here the lord gives this verse in matthew verse 19 5 19 says whosoever therefore shall break one of the least commandments shall teach men so he shall be called the least in the kingdom of god but whosoever shall do and teach them the same shall be great in the kingdom of god which points to all of the least commandments of god's instructions are also very very important and nothing is invalidated god's word cannot be invalidated everything that is written all the code of conduct as jesus is saying that um, in john chapter 10 verse 35 is saying that um, the scripture cannot be broken from the beginning of god's word uh, fr- from genesis to revelation everything is is important and to to the finest detail it shall be permanent as permanent as the heavens and the earth are and we shall never lose its value or its importance or its significance and uh, the least of the commandments are also very very important and it is required as god's children he he says the mark of the citizen of his kingdom is that his righteousness should exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the pharisees who are outside the kingdom it is what it means is to practically apply the word of god and live by it it is a, a complete change in and transformation and a true conversion that yields to to desire to obey from in from the inner being of it god's it's living in a new level of and a new concept of of righteousness altogether is how a true christian would live in his kingdom it is a true mark of a believer is to live in a world of righteousness or a realm of righteousness that far exceeds far exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the and the pharisees which is just a following of the of the rules right i was just giving the example of of the rules what happens if you just follow the rules but not do no, uh, even one single additional um thing that would um, help or that's coming from the heart but you just literally follow every rule that is given how the pharisees uh, used to follow the rules just just observing the rules but if you just observe the rules jesus is saying that you have not even started to enter into god's kingdom entering into god's kingdom is not just a, a bunch of rules that we have to follow to god but it should be coming out of your great uh, gratitude and your realization that what jesus christ has done for you and me that you out of your heart that you work for god out of great gratitude and a, that is coming out of a response of love it is not something that you you wanted to just do because you are given to do with a set of rules and not giving your heart to god god demands our heart 
and your life that everything belongs to him what he is offering us through jesus christ is such a great gift that it demands everything the whole of our being is demanded from us by god though the bible tells us that um, christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes but we are in a different plane of um, righteousness different standard of righteousness that way exceeds the righteousness of rules and laws uh, that um, with a set of rules but our righteousness should be coming from the heart by the spirit of god out of great love for god that is the true conversion true conversion yields to a greater desire to obey god it is not just something that um, okay i i have to do this I have to, i have to do that i have to do this so let me do these three things and then i'm free but true child of god who enters into the kingdom of heaven starts his life with true repentance godly repentance as uh, second um, corinthians chapter 7 talks about our conversion which includes faith and also repentance is a true mark of a child of god where he is truly receive god's salvation and truly realizes what jesus christ has done for for him on the cross of calvary second corinthians 7 verse 10 says for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation so here is the true mark of a believer a true citizen of the kingdom of heaven is somebody whose righteousness is not based on just rules but his righteousness is based on the love of god and by his thankful heart that he will continue to live a life that is constrained by the love of god that demands that he will give everything to god so that is the practical application of a true christian character is that you live by faith looking unto jesus the author and finisher of our faith so there is this danger of getting into a state where you might say that um, we are under grace so we we are no more under the law there is this um, false doctrine called antinomianism antinomian antinomo is nomo is like uh, the greek word which means law and anti means no and nomos means moral no moral laws when we believe in jesus christ there's certain uh, verses that they take and twist um that mean that he, for christ is in romans chapter 10 verse 4 says christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes and in galatians chapter 3 verse 23 25 also says before faith came we were we held captive under the law but after that now christ came there's no long no longer under the the law but we are under the grace there's certain verses that we can just read and build our doctrine which is false but the true doctrine of the new testament or what the bible tells us is that we are um, led by the spirit of god and we are in the law of christ under the law of grace and true law of grace is not something that is a cheap grace that we always not realizing the true love of god that we we might just um try to be deceive deceive ourselves in galatians chapter 6 we'll close with this verse galatians chapter 6 the seven says be not deceived god is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth that shall he reap so he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting 
Christ is the fulfillment of the law, but we should exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees and the scribes who are religious. The only way that we can escape, uh, we can exceed and escape the demands of the law is by living under the new law of Christ. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 2 says, Bury one another's burden, so fulfill the law of Christ. The law of Christ. In Romans chapter 8, going back to the law of life. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin. For what the law could not do, that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So Jesus is, is, is giving this description of those that belong to his kingdom where righteousness dwells. Bible tells us that God loves righteousness and hates iniquity. God's laws, perfect laws continue to uphold in his kingdom. And we as God's children, that we should uphold the moral standards of God by loving God with all of our lives and also loving one another. And that is the whole summary of the law and the prophets with Jesus Christ. So when we were weak, and we were helpless. Jesus Christ has fulfilled. Being a perfect man, he died for our sins so that the curse of the law that was put upon him, he took the curse of the law that, so that we are free from the demands and the curse of the law that we can serve the Lord freely. Being thankful, ever thankful that what God has done for us as a gift for us that we can never repay him back for what he has done. But we can show that we love him by living under the law of Christ. And that is the basic expectation and that is the basic mark of a person who enters the kingdom of heaven. If you, you, are also, if you also believe that you are his ch child, if you also believe that truly you are you have faith in Jesus Christ, then also we should see that there is conversion. If you say, I have just faith, but there is no turning in your life, there is no repentance. Repentance is like turning away and uh, you have a different life now. You are no more in your old ways. You, are, you have everything new. All, your perspective is different. All things, old ways, all thoughts are now being overcome. Now you are a new person. All things have passed away. All things, your all perspective is now different. You want to please God who died for you, who loved you so much. You, you want to follow him with all of your heart. You want to love him because of what he has done. You have totally understood what the sacrifice of Jesus Christ is. When you truly understand, then there is uh, there is true conversion. There is true turning away from your old ways. And there is true following that happens. So that is what Jesus is saying. That unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of, of the religious people. Who are just a bunch of people who are just following the law. Following the rules. Just like following like um, a set of rules clean this area, then they'll just only clean this area, they don't bother to clean anything else. If somebody is looking, probably they'll clean some more. But when nobody is looking, they don't really care. But do you want to serve the Lord with a heart of gratitude or with a heart of love is what the Lord demands of us. Let us pray. <coughs> Dear loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for your words of life. There is so much of power in, in your words, Lord. Though there's such small verses, Lord, but there is so much depth. And um, Lord, we thank you for Jesus Christ sending Jesus Christ 
that when we are weak in our flesh and we are weak lord even now only by your spirit only by the spirit of jesus christ and by his power that we can be overcomers to love you more and more a god who gives opportunities once again when we fail oh lord and when we confess you are a god who is faithful and just to forgive us of sins by the power of your blood the blood of jesus christ can cleanse us from all of our sins and unrighteousness if our heart is right if you are willing lord and obedient try to be obedient you are a god who who loved who loved us so much that you are able also to give us victory in christ jesus we thank you for your great love bless this word may it be profitable and, and pleasing unto you in jesus precious name we pray amen